Um, place my shovel. Here we go. Shin Kaisto. では勉強を始めます。今日は英語やんないちか Welcome back to Business Communication Skills. This is the last module in our networking course, and we'll be focusing on making arrangements and invitations in writing, text messages, and emails. You'll also learn how to accept and decline an invitation politely in an email. Finally, you will learn how to write a follow-up email after meeting someone. In this first lesson, we'll focus on text messages, how and when to send texts in a business setting. Here are the learning outcomes for this lesson. These days, it seems people are always on their phones. And why not? We can do so much on them. But we should be careful because our phones give us many opportunities to make mistakes, offend someone, or embarrass ourselves. And in business, that can be costly. So let's start by learning some guidelines for using your phone to send text messages in business. Oh, and by the way, it's not a good idea to text during a meeting, like in the picture. You learned in module three that it is good to be clear and concise when writing an email. Well, this is even truer for text messages. We don't have much time or space to write long messages on the phone, so they should be short and clear. Here are two examples. Which message is clearer? Of course, the second one is clearer and a lot easier to write too. Between friends, using texting abbreviations is common, but with business contacts, using too many can look unprofessional and the receiver may not even know what you mean. Using commonly known abbreviations is okay. For example, BTW instead of by the way, FYI instead of for your information, or W slash E for weekend. But do you know these abbreviations? Even if you do, maybe the person you are sending the message to doesn't. Oh, and here are the meanings, by the way. It's better to spell out words like you and later instead of typing you and L8R. It looks much more professional. The good thing about using phones and emails today is the autocorrect feature. However, you should always double check your message before sending it to make sure that one of your words hasn't been changed to something embarrassing. Here's an example. One time I received a message from a professional contact. He wanted to write, are you surprised? But it was changed to, are you stupid? Because texting is short and direct, it should only be used for simple routine topics. Remember, routine means normal and common topics. When we read a text message, we don't see any body language or facial expressions. <laughs> also, we don't hear the writer's tone of voice. This makes it difficult to communicate anything but simple topics in a text. Using emojis is fine between friends or close colleagues, but it's not a good idea when you want to give a mm. professional impression. Texting someone with bad news or a negative comment is not really a good idea in business. If you receive this text message, you probably wouldn't be impressed with the sender. Here's another tip. Sometimes your contact might not know who you are if you send a text message because they will sometimes just see the phone number. So. Especially if it's the first time you are sending a text to the, the person, use your name at the end of the message. And actually, in some messaging programs, you can automatically add your name at the end of a message by going to the signature option. Finally, let's think about what you do when you receive a message. Unlike with an email, the writer probably expects an immediate response. So, as long as it's appropriate for you to text, don't wait too long to reply, even if it's a simple OK. These days, we can also use instant messaging apps. 
Por enquanto não podemos jogar a África da cara mal. Você pode escrever mensagens longas e enviar imagens, áudio e vídeo, mas muitas das regras são as mesmas para mensagens tradicionais. Então, vamos rever as regras que você aprendeu sobre enviar mensagens em negócios. Porque as mensagens de texto são curtas e podem ser lidas e respondidas rapidamente, They are useful when we want to make arrangements. Look at this example. The language is clear and they have made the arrangements very quickly. Imagine if they had done this over email. It might have taken a lot longer because there usually would be a longer time gap between each email message. And maybe one of the people would even forget to answer. Now, look at this example. These days, with smartphones, you can send links and maps, making it very convenient to make arrangements. Notice that in text messages, it is also common to use incomplete sentences. And sending a text message is very convenient when things don't exactly go as planned. For example, if you are late or the place is full or closed. Here are some examples of what to write if you're late. And here are some examples if the place where you plan to meet is closed or full. Now, let's do a quiz to practice some of the language to make updates to arrangements. ユース。はい、なんだ。なんか。あ、オートクリックとか。正解。正解、正解、正解。え、で、もう一つ。ルーチントピックスかな。え、違う。ユーズテキストのスタートビーコンサイズ。問題単語オートクリックとリーズユーズオーケストサイズ。最高でビーコンサイズ。これどうだ when you're running late, it's okay to send a text to the other person to let him or her know where you are, but what should you do if you need to cancel the meeting? Look at this example. How would you feel if you received this message? Unless you are good friends with each other, it might not give a good impression. Also, what if the other person didn't see the text and was waiting for you? This would be very embarrassing. The best thing to do in this situation is to make a call so that you know the other person has got the message. You can also make other alternative plans. Listen to this example. Hi, Eric. Sarah here. Listen, I'm afraid something's come up and I have to cancel our meeting today. I'm really sorry. Oh, that's too bad. No problem. I understand. But I'd still like to get together before you leave. Are you free tomorrow around 10? Um. I think so. I'll have to check with my colleague, but I'll text you to confirm. Same place? Sure. And my treat. Well, thank you. Hopefully see you tomorrow then. Yes. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for calling. No problem. Bye. Bye. So, how do you decide when to text and when to call? Ooh. Let's go through some examples. What would you use if you don't want to disturb someone or interrupt what they are doing? 
Sending a text is better in this case because although the person may not answer the call, a text is less disruptive and allows them to answer as soon as it is convenient. How about if you want to explain something? Making a call is better because explaining something is more complex and you can check if the other person has understood. You need an answer as soon as possible. People will usually answer phone calls sooner than texts. You are contacting someone for the first time. Making a call is definitely better than sending a text. Or even better would be sending an email. Send text messages to someone you have been in contact with before. <laughs> <laughs> It's <after> business hours. <laughs> sending a text would be better because maybe the other person is relaxing or having dinner and a text won't disturb them as much as a call would. Of course, if you are busy or somewhere where it would be difficult to talk, then sending a text would be best. But remember, only if it's something that is not complicated or where you don't need to be indirect. So, now you know how to write and when it is appropriate to use text messages in business situations and still present a professional image. Let's finish this lesson with a short exercise where you'll be writing some text messages. そして、問題かな一発にしよう。課題の開始。イドリンジステンションのライトミステージフォーム Text message だから。まだな。まだ Even somehow, you are meeting someone at cafe in about 10 minutes. You've only spoken on the phone. You, so you want to just discover yourself and you go in court. Yeah, so it's
This can be the town has extra in the sky next. Let's wait. Where's the reply? Okay, let's go. ガイドコイの楽にリアリーカウリーとか、なるほどね。これ OK、大丈夫。大丈夫でしょう。使ってできてますでし。アンサーでもしょんもできてです。リプレイとイメージ。ちょなんでライブかいゲーなんだよ学習用教材。ボキャブラディリスト。まあ、ここはこういうのを使いましょうという話なので、実際にはあまり。イネルで In the, you focus on making a judgment and its invitation in text messages and emails. Text messages and emails pose different challenges in business communication. So it's important to actually use the language in different cases. It also on how to accept the claim and invitation for it in email. Finally, you also learn how to write a follow-up email after meeting someone. Shuryo to shite. 14, 15後後にして、やだらけが終わったので、次に、えー、っと、1の、ダンジャパスケット。ロジックとベースこそ、ウェルカムというモダンジャパスケット、ES6BX。This is a project based course which should be approximately two hours to finish. At 2時間で終わる。Build the event is based on the Lucas course objectives as a structure. Major Office ES6 will be able to apply ES6 in a practical situation. You will learn how to fix every problem caused by this. <laughs> also, this is an easy learning material. Once ES6, this is the handle of the project will be able to work. The line. This is the final assignment that you will need to pass in order to finish the course successfully. Getting started. Go you, Nana won't matter at the. My name is System Real for the line. Yo, Kaito. The Kaito's project to Niki Masho. Go ahead. あ,あ、起動しない。えうん、切ってるから、それを OK にしないといけない。これでさえ読み込む。メディア
Amazon AWS. Ahí me cae. えー、っと、そして。違う違うか。うん、ギット、ブラウンチ、エススの、スイッチ、エスエクス。テレビピックなんかすぎなかったのシェシーリシーピーエンのシーリーウィッツカーブ。おぉ。ビジュアルソース行動機だ。これでオッケー。で、行きましょう。My name is Tinimir of Waiva, and I'm a Google developer expert for Angular and Web Technologies. Together, we're going to learn about ES6. ES6 is the sixth version of the ECMAScript standard that standardizes the JavaScript language. It was released in the year 2015, so it's sometimes also called ECMAScript 2015. So if you come across both terms, just make sure、uh, understand that they mean the same thing. All the features that we are going to learn today, such as let and const, arrow functions, and string interpolations, are widely supported by all modern browsers. And they're also supported by the browser if you're working with it. So we're going to use Node.js instead of a browser today to learn and go through our material. But before jumping into the code, let me introduce you to the Rhyme platform. On the right hand side, you see my pre recorded video. Where I'm gonna explain the video on my cloud desktop. Here I'm moving my cursor right now. You can pause that video at any time, and you can also adjust the speed if I'm talking too slow or too fast for you. On the left hand side, you see your own pre set up cloud desktop. It is fully interactive, and I encourage you today to take advantage of it. We're gonna. <laughs> これアクセスブルモードになってるから、これをデサーブに捨てるようにすると、綺麗になって、大丈夫か。じゃあ、これでやってみて、楽しみかな。えーと、四角だから、ウィンドウの OK うんこれで今これが映ってるはず We're gonna have plenty of hands on exercises where I'm gonna ask you to pause the video and do something on your own in your own machine Or more likely, or your own pre set up cloud desktop. So make sure that now that you pause the video and play around with the desktop. You should have the Visual Studio Code editor open right here. <laughs> This is the editor that we're gonna use today. And you should also have the file index.js open. This is the file that we're gonna write our code in. So for our code today, we're gonna use Note, as I said. But more specifically, we're gonna use a package called Nodemon. The job of Nodemon is to restart the application every time we make a change to the code and save the file. So go ahead, let's go ahead and start the project. 
you should have the terminal pane open over here. Make sure to select it. Setting the accessible mode on it. Go 100% on it. This over here, just go to the terminal link in the menu and open a new terminal by clicking on this button. Alright, then go ahead and type on the command line npx. npx is an executable installed together with npm on your machine. Its job is to execute bin files in your um, node dependencies. And nodemon is also a node dependency that I have pre installed in the project so that we can use it. And then we have to provide the entry point for our application. Yes, that's right. This is the index.js file. Oh. Now the terminal. At CD. Essentials index So this is all you want to get to see. It's like a install state. Print text. Hmm, code. インデックスです。ターミナルで、もう一回 npx ノードのインデックスエンジェ。コートデバッグ。ウェイティングデバッグがあってですけど。So go ahead and press enter. And now you should see the hello ES6 text over here. As you can see, this matches the console walk. Mm. Go ahead and change the text. Let's add a few exclamation marks, for example. And. Then just save the file. As you can see, node mode is restarting due to the changes that we made. It starts、uh, our file again, and we see the change that we have made. Go ahead and make as many changes as you want, and when you're ready, just come back to the video. Welcome back. Well, that was all for now. Uh, I'll see you in the second task where we're going to learn about the new keyword let that allows you to declare block scope variables. We're going to have a little、um, refresher on scoping and what it means. Welcome back. In the second task, we're going to discuss the let keyword and scoping. Now, the old way to declare variables in ES5 or in JavaScript was by using the var keyword. With var, we can also redeclare variables, which means that we can、uh, 
initialize redeclare the dog variable again and set it to some other thing. Shiba. If we log it, we're gonna see the new value. Let's go ahead and remove this first task so that we have a clearer view. で、ドックイコール、ドゴ。Consult and roll. Look. Look on your arm. I'm in three. Wait, that's going to be again, eh? あ、エラ出た。やばっ。で、Alright, we can also redefine variables, which means that we can just set them to a new value like that. どこっていうところが。トリコ。on top of the um, entrance of the file in this uh, example and then they're initialized to undefined so their initial value is set to undefined and when we reach again their actual decoration their value is updated this is why we can use them and this is actually kind of tricky and can lead to some quite unexpected behavior so be beware and try not to use that and what about es6 well es6 introduces the let and the const keywords. In this task, we're gonna use just let, but in the next task, we're gonna compare it against const. The way to declare a variable with let is by typing the keyword let, followed by uh, the name of the variable, and then again, optionally, the value. Let's try using the newly declared variable, and we get the value. Now, what is different is that we, if we try to redeclare it, we're gonna get an error because the cat is already declared. So we cannot redeclare variables declared with cat, uh, with let. Sorry, but if we try to change the value, but the circuit time on it. Ah, 
あんまり知ってないんだよなぁ。ニッケ。これしか知らん。特にやっぱし。白、このまでは、エラーまで。好き。で、この場合は、レッドはエラーが出るのは分かってるから、単に、変数の和書きをすれば、ダックスンとスペラーラスキーだっておしまいになると。OK。So just redefine it and we save it here. お、こんにちは。We're not gonna get... 今は。JavaScript の勉強をしています。Let's try logging that. And we have the updated value. So we cannot redeclare variables, but we can redefine them. And what if we try to use the variable before it. JIS 沼に入ったんですかおめでとう。Reference error, we cannot access the variable、yeah. for initialization. So this doesn't mean that.、Uh, いろいろとやってみてるんで。フロントエンドだと、まあ、JavaScript から抜けられませんよね。ああ、そっか。趣味ですか今のところ趣味ですね。仕事をしているわけではないので。そこは何かず、ウェブとかにアプリケーションとか出そうとするとお金かかるんですけどね。自分の中だけでやる分にはいいんですけど。Uh, And print the variable outside of the function. Let's see what happens. So inside we have Cocker Spaniel and outside we have Akira. これはまあスタンダードスコープの発生ですね。Variable declared inside the function is scoped to the function scope of this function. こういう講座を見ていていつも思うのはその機能があるってどうやって知ったのどうやって発送したのっていうところがわからないってこと。ああ、これ辺は見てみていくうちにだんだんわかるのかなと思いますけど。言,言語っていうのは、あとは検索してみていくとだんだん見つかるみたいな感じがあります
例えばこのオブジェクトにはこういうメソッドがありますみたいなの常識みたいに先生っていうか動画主が言っててさあーありますねこの場合、オウムが平って言うはずなんだけど、いやいや、そのメソッド全部知ってないといけないのもし全部知らなくてもいいなら、どういう基準で知ればいいの調べ方はっていうところ、説明がないんだよね、そこんとこ。ああ、ありますね。書く、書いてるだけで、どうログを作るか説明しませんもんね。だから自分で書きます。ってなった時に手が止まっちゃうんだよね。ここに見ただけで何も作れない。そうですね。あとは本当にそこは検索とかインターネットでどうやって書くかっていうのをやっていかないと分かんなくなっちゃいますよね。難しいですよね、そこら辺。でも実際にやっ,てみくってやっていくっていうのをやんないと。おう、タスクに行った。おお。If のブロックでバーをやってみる。入ってねえ。ちょっとかな。結局どっかから見たようなコードパクルか参考にして作ってバグで動かなくて。壁にぶち当たって調べまくって解消してを繰り返して、経験値貯めていくしかないよね。だよ、ですよね。だいたいエラー出した分だけ強くなるって感じですよね。うーん。あれもめんどくさいから一回、ここを一回消して。ウェルディッシュエイティングデバッグ。これショートガーだから、普通に、バーでここで書き換えるっていうことですね。スレッドを使うと、まあ、ショートレギースを短ければ、これウェルム講義のはずのここが入って、これで保存。そうすると、あ、このコンソール6枚6抜けてる。あっ
そうすると、イフブロックのレッドが消え、終わるから、書き換えなしでジャック・ラッセルが戻ると。コンシステンシー、we can just change the rest of the variables to let. Great job, everyone! In this task, we learned about function scope, block scope, hoisting, and the let keyword. I'll see you, see you in the next one where we're gonna explore the const keyword and immutability. The next one is const. Hey there! In the third task, we will explore the const keyword and how it differs from let. But first, let's just clean everything that we have over here. Make sure to select all the text and just delete it. So that we can have a clear view of what is going on. So the const keyword is introduced again by ES6. It can be used to declare variables just like let. And just like let, its variables live in the temporal dead zone until declared, have box scoping instead of function scope, and cannot be redeclared. So what is different? Just to have a good time with this. Let are mutable. Let's just to ES6. Meaning that they can be redefined. Let's test this out. As you can see, we don't get any errors. If we, if we log the values of the artist before we change the value and After we change it, we see that the value is changed successfully. So variables declared by const, on the other hand, cannot be redeclared and cannot be redefined either. So if we change this to const, we're gotta get a type. Yeah. Because I'm not sure. I don't know. でもファンクションとか設定するとこれがないと困るってことがよくわかりましたよ。Also, you cannot omit the value initially, so we must always provide a value because otherwise we get a syntax error missing missing initializer in const declaration. But there is something tricky with const. The created binding is constant, meaning that we cannot change. What the variable points to. However, we can change the value itself because the value is constant or immutable. Try saying that fast. All right. Let's say that we have an array declared with const. Let's have some. This is really bugged. The array name is a little bit weird. 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 For example, the Starry Night by Van Gogh and the Night Cafe by the same painter. We can modify the value because it is not a. What are they doing? That? Can they do anything? Ah, they can. Ah, they can. こうコンストでやるとん
待って。えー、っと。まあ、これは、あとにするとして。おう、できるんだった。まあ、この場合、ペインティングズはあれだから、えっ、ー、と、コンスト、ペインティングス、イコール、例えば、ちの、なんの花。コンソールログのペインティングスここまでは普通にできる。じゃあ、ペインティングポジション。こんな風にやると、このまま数化はできる。これは、コンストロスの辺配列をさせて、そこは変わらなければってことだな。So, for example, we can add a new painting tower here. As you can see, we have the new painting added. We can also modify painting inside the array. Of course, we have to log it after the modification. And you see that it is modified. But if we try to reassign painting to something else, we're going to get an error. Again, because the painting、ね、itself is constant. これのデータが残って、中変えられるっていうのが便利ですね。まあ、変えるだけ、中はもうコンソールでいいだけだし。ペイントテン。And we can also modify the existing properties. You can see that this is pretty successful. And again, if we try to reassign. ああ、なるほど。In our object. You cannot modify the properties of a frozen object. But unfortunately, the object is shallow. The only level of object properties is frozen. If there are any objects or arrays nested inside the properties, they can be modified.、Oh. Let's see an example. We can add the location of the painting, and this is going to be an object. So we have the name of the museum. And the city where it is. Now we have object trees, and let's try modifying the nested location object. But the location still USA, what's equal to As you can see, we have the change successfully added. 
This is because, again, object freeze is shallow. It only freezes the first level of properties. If we want to freeze, we need to use object freeze again. Object freeze is shallow. We need to use object freeze again. Location of freeze is shallow. We provided the location. As you can see here, we don't have our changes. All right, let's take a look at our next exercise. We need to use our new knowledge to make the value of the painter immutable. Make sure you uncomment the code, pause the video, and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. Here is the solution to our challenge. で、これで。オブジェクト。フリーズ。ペインター。ドットのペインティングスとやると。エラーが出る。ま、サムシンができないよねっていう話だ。だから、でも下の本来のペインターは だって。ネームバンゴ。ペインターバースデートはエラーは出ない。もう機械は不可となるわけね。Challenge. We need to use object freeze twice. Once for the paintings and once for the uh, sorry, once for the painter and once for the painter paintings. So we have object freeze, painter, and once again, object freeze, painter, paintings. If we save, we are actually gonna see an error. This is a type error, and it says that we cannot add property tree because the object over here, the object uh, paintings is not extensible. So we can just remove that. And it is a good thing that we get this error because um, we're not going to need runtime and we can make our modifications. Let's save the code and this is nice. All right, so now we know that there are two new keywords for declaring variables, let and const. But when should we use one or the other? There are quite a lot of opinions about that. My own rule of thumb is always prefer const. That way, if you try to redeclare the variable, you will get an error. And if you have no other choice but redeclare it, just switch for let. Ah, and the the since ES6 has been out, I've never had a use case for var. Also work. In this task, we learned about how const is different from let and also what is different between constant binding and constant value. I'll see you in the next task where we will talk about extracting data with destructing Welcome to your challenge task. Let's take the knowledge that we learned in the past few tasks and practice it in a real world example. In this challenge, you have to create a function called get squared values factory that takes an array of numbers for challenge task. Let's take the knowledge that we learned in the past few tasks and practice it in a real world example. In this challenge, you have to create a function called get squared values factory that takes an array of numbers, then iterates through each number and creates a new function. This function inside it, you have to return the number squared. 
So make sure you figure out what's the right way to get the number and return it squared so that uh, these new functions contain each number squared. Then this function should be pushed inside the functions array. And finally, your get squared values factory should return this array of functions. Let's take an example. We have the numbers from one to four. We apply get squared values factory to these numbers and we get an array of functions. When we invoke each function and print out the value, we need to get one, four, nine, and 16. So take some time and practice this on your own. You can reuse the code snippet that you see in the video, or you can write it on your own. I'll see you in the next task where we will explain how to solve this challenge. Welcome well, well. to your challenge task. Let's take the knowledge that we learned in the past few tasks and press the code snippet that you see in the video, or you can write it. あの、ファンクション。ブリンガンディスペースプレイプリペアチャイ。プレイズ、ここで。チャレンジ。ファクトリーとしておいて。え、ファン。書いてないところ、おいおい。numbers it uh, well, functions only success the functions I equal semicolon I show equal number I plus plus the target we have to buy ゴール。あの、ファンクション。関数式にして。で。そうだ、ファンクション。ブッシュのマスクだやつ関数をなる。そしてそしてそしてあ。
これでってもいいのかなちょっと書いてみよう。クリアードバリューエペニエンス。クリアードバリューなるほど。コールゲット。ファクトリーの、なるほど。で、コンソールの、ログの、こう読みしてみよう。えちょっとここから動くから、動かなかった。ミスコンディファンディアイ。ファンクション気付けたし。ああ。で、コンソールテンログのゲット。ああ。このゲット。はい。プラス。まあ、コロンスペース。プラス。テン。うんこう動いてない。これで動いてくれないとまらない。うん。ファンクション。ナンバーステン、レングスとして。ファンクション。ナンバー。大かっこ愛の。はい。これでエラーが出てもいいや。どうだアンドロイドのエラー。あ、そっか、これは出るから、ここをナンバーズにすればいいはず。ここまではいい
Where we will explain how to solve this challenge. What would be your challenge task? Let's take the knowledge that we learned in the past few tasks and practice it in a real world example. In this challenge, you have to create a function called get squared values factory that takes an array of numbers, then iterates through each number and creates a new function. This function inside it, you have to return the number squared. So make sure you figure out what's the right way to get the number and return it squared so that uh, these new functions contain each number squared. Then this function should be pushed inside the functions array. And finally, your get squared values factory should return this array of functions. Let's take an example. We have the numbers from one to four. We apply get squared values factory to these numbers and we get an array of functions. When we invoke each function and print out the value, we need to get 1, 4, 9, and 16. Ah, squared value of evidence for each element. Eh, to go, go, so, run, so, not, eh? Squared value of evidence, then. おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。おお。お
As a result, instead of getting 1, 4, 9, and 16, we get 16 every time. And this is because uh, of the function scope variables. Number is handled as if it had been declared at the beginning of this function. We don't get a new environment for each iteration of the for loop. なるほど。これじゃあ、5 バーで書き換えると However, we can use let or const and create a box, uh, box scope instead of function scope. That way we're going to get a new variable number for each iteration. Let's save the file and see what happens. Now we have the correct result. This is because number is bound to a new number every time. We have a different environment. Well, thank you and I'll see you in the next task. Welcome back. In task 4, we will dig deep into the structuring. But first, let's take a look at how we can define objects in JavaScript. For example, we can have a recipe with a property name, time that we need to prepare it in minutes, and also a list of ingredients. なるほど。Time in minutes. That is on you. Dario. Ingredient. Mm -hmm. うん。あ、
そしてあなるほどえこうやった後は当然こうすることでよそうそう取り出すことができる Let's just print everything to make sure that we didn't make any mistakes. でそれぞれを表示すると。レシピねえ。イングリデン。うんうん。こう。もっと使うようにじゃしないけど。ネームってシンプルなやつ使いたくない。えー、ターミナルで、新しいターミナルで。ああ、ここまでこれでにくっつくのか。ああ、そういうふうに便利できるんだ。マディこのネームにして、ここを、コンスト、こうレシピー同じようにああ。何だにここのレイマンできないネームじゃなくここを例えばネームはレシピネームとするそうするとエラーでのこのネームが表示されてないからだから、こうレシピネームに変えて、こうやると、おう、きれいになる。
just to make sure that everything is fine. We're gonna save again and we get the same result. The structuring also works for arrays, not only for objects. Let's declare a new array spices and have some of my favorite spices over here. So we have cardamom, turmeric, cumin, and we can extract the first and the second objects, uh, the second pro um, items of the array by accessing them just like that. So the this is going to grab the first item of the array, and this is going to grab the second one. You see here that it works as expected. Wow. We can use structuring not only for declaring variables, but also for function parameters. Let's declare a new function, cook, and we have here the recipe. Now let's just console log the recipe dot name and for instance we need to use also the recipe ingredients and we may have to use also the time but i'm just gonna skip that for brevity and instead of uh, destructuring them just like here uh, let's call the function first with our recipe we have the um, expected result so instead of uh, restructuring the arguments of, the, of this object, the recipe object inside the uh, body of the function, we can just do this over here. So we can grab the name and the ingredients. Uh, and we can use them inside the function. And we have the same result. こう消してああ、こういう風に書くえー。おこうやってレシピコロプラスねインゲリア You should note here that the rest of the properties are not available inside the body of the function. If we need them, we can just add them to the arguments list. Let's have a little exercise to practice what we've learned so far. Come over here to the exercise for this task and just uncomment the lines. Let's go back a little bit. All right, we have the ingredients for masawa chai and a function that prints the recipe. It looks a little bit clumsy right now because it extracts the ingredients one by one. Mm. で、ファンクション、プレピアティ、紅茶の用意。うん。ほう。
ここで、イングレディアントで t イングレディじゃあ例えば。You need to refactor it to use the structuring. So pause the video and come back when you're ready. Well, 書き換えてみます。ここを今の形で書き換えればよ。できるはずということは例えば。こう。と。コンストとかでできるかな。いい。スパイシーズ。ミルク。スタイル。スイーツイーツ。エナー。ごそうすん。ああ、クラッシュだ。さすがにコンソできないか。before starting, えデータブリュー EETE。待て、まみかいてみよう。サブスナーが上がってる。えっ、ー、と、イングレディエンツを。スパイシーミルクウィーティナー。ここでやったアンエクスペクティティミルクうんあコンマ抜けてるってミルクスパイスこれでミクスパイティティズいかなくっていうふうにしてでもこれでコンスルでやってみたいのよね。あだまけやっぱし。要するに、大括弧で囲んで、コンマで中の部屋にすれば、このこういうのはいらないと。Let's transform the function together. So we have the ingredients, and we can just extract tea, spices, milk, and sweetener. And we can just remove all that. Let's save, and we have our recipe for masawa chai. I highly recommend it, by the way. It's really, really sweet and awesome. All right, so our function looks so much shorter. But as you may have noticed, there is an obvious drawback. We don't have any default values in the destructured version. If one of the destructured properties is missing from the provided object, it will automatically be assigned to undefined. And this is, isn't the greatest default value. 
But to worry not, there is an easy way to define the, um, to specify default values for the structured parameters. Cool. And here's how we can assign the value regular to the parameter t. So if we now don't have t inside our object. <laughs> いいこうレギュラー。This is gonna be our default value. Pause the video if you want to provide default values for the rest of the parameters. Welcome back. So another cool thing is the rest operator. You can use it to extract the remaining properties into an array. So let's just go back a little bit to our spices. As you can see here, we have the spices array. So I'm just going to copy it and have it here for reference, but it's already declared. And if you want to extract the first one, the first spice, you can type that. Oh, sorry, it's already been declared, so let's call it spice one. This is spices. All right, we have the cardamom. And as I said, we can use the rest operator by using three consecutive dots and grabbing the other properties. Uh, this is, of course, uh, just a name for the variable. You can type anything else like rest of the spices, for instance. And let's see what we have inside. We have the rest of the spices. So we have everything after cardamom. And the final thing is that we can also use a legion to skip elements. So for example, if you wanted to skip the first What's the elements, night there? Eh, tatoeba. Akua ya i to shite. と。アイシズ。コール。カルダモン。クミン。本質と。はい、あ、違う。はい、スイッチ。あだ。コールスパイス。うん。例えば
豚肉とやって、ここがスパイス1じゃなくて高いバニッこういう風にすると。あ今度だからリングツーとする。トルダモンスペース。オブジェクト、オブジェクト。ええー。ちょっと待って。ミートコンマ Keep it p o n i t i n g me all. Const ing two equal. Utanic cardamon, cumi. Um. うん、あこんま。いや、こうか。こうすると、区民が入る。いや。
をやると、体も組む。ちゃんと形を合わせれば、ちゃんとできるんだね。This is called restructuring. See you in the next one where we'll talk about the new features related. The links of interpolation. Welcome back. In this test, we're going to see what are the new string features brought by ES6. But first, let's just clean up our file a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything that we have created in task 4. All right, let's create a new string. This is going to be、um, a language. And I'm just going to type English for now. So, in strings, we have some handy new methods. For example, we can use includes, just like that, language dot includes, to check if some text is inside our string. So, let's just use the letter G and the letter L. Not at all. インクールドってのはログが入ったよという。タスクを。あんげ一一個。一個は、だからこっちはやっぱ日本人のジャパニーズですよね。どうぜコンソールのログ .1.2 インクルーズ .ta とすると、ブルーが変える。And we get true because this is inside. If you have some other random string, We're gonna get false. And、wow. you can just have a single string as well. It doesn't really matter. Another handy thing that we can use is the starts with method. So we can check if the language starts with E. And this is true. Yeah. Console. Log. Language 1点 start with JA。JA は大丈夫かはずだな、まずは。わかりやすいように、スタートで使いとこう。ブルー。なんか、こっちは、向かって。ザ・スタート・ブリッジ・ジャパンの JA だったら、JA でも取る。Because it is a capitalized E. If we have just a lowercase E, this is gonna be false. So these methods are case sensitive. And again, we can have、uh, multiple Uh, letters over here, not just a single one. Awesome. And of course, we also have ends with. And it's bar. Which works in pretty much the same way. Again, it is case sensitive, so we're going to get false if we end with a capitalized A. <laughs> Another method that is present on the Um, string prototype right now is the repeat. So if you want to repeat、uh, a string multiple times, we can just use the name of the string dot repeat and the time that we want to repeat the string. As you can see here, we get English, English, English. Oh.
関数を転ろういくつかの数文字列に対して、えー、まあ、当然なら、スコア、コンマ、では、エッジ、ヘロースペース、円、リピート、カッコサンプルって、カッコさんの、カッコカッコでやると、エローが3回出ると。Awesome. Another really cool feature in strings are the template literals. So far, if we wanted to concatenate multiple strings, we had to use the pause operator, just like that. I speak pause language. Awesome. In fact, in ES6, we can use template literals. So we have to replace the、um, quotes with backticks. This is a weird character that is usually located、um, on the left of your one. Key and all right, let's run the whole expression with a backtick. Let's remove this comma. And then, if we have some expression that we want to evaluate, we can also remove、uh, the pos operator. So, if we have some expression, we have to surround it with dollar sign and curly braces. Oh, just like that. Back potential to call it the hands to think of it. What a kick of a chick. テシングだからバックエッセンスピークダラーがこのあーエスピークジャパニーズ。get the same result over here。inside the、um, curly braces we can type any valid JavaScript expression。here are some examples。for example we can、uh, say if the language is English。then。print、um,。I don't know, British English. And if it's not, no,、nah, quite random. So we get British English because、uh, this comparison is truty and evaluates to this string over here. We can also use template literature. It's not going to be me. ラン a ー g e あ,あ。イコールイコールイコール。ニーズ。コロン。日本語。あ、uh, okay. ダブルコーテンションとかも必要なのか。ジャパニーズ
ジャパニーズなら日本語。のところとですそうすると、あれアンゲージ一個一個ジャパニーズあってな。日本語おはてなだよ。そうすると、はてなスピーカー日本語。はい、スピークの、なるほどね。Two rows for multi-line strings. Just like that. So if you want to move this to the next line, we can do it. And we have the string on multiple lines. All right, now that we know about these fancy new features, let's practice them. In the next exercise, you're gonna have to refactor the code to use ES6. Of course, make sure to uncomment it first and just replace all these index offs with the um, compatible utility methods and make sure to use template strings. So go ahead and pause the video. ここまでよ。何個目に。うーん。どうすんだろう。I speak in Hong Kong, my old go. Went out to stay. Down to start with Bulgaria. カントリー、スタートウィッツ。マジックシティ。SDA start the with mm. 146-13 If country then is that which eh, no, beyond zero. えー、だぜ
ょっとここ一回、動かして、ユフうんとり、キリオロダートウィッツ。カッコ。BULT。んよくそっちか。キー。キリオド。ST。タートウィッツ。えーと、もう一回ちゃんと、if? あ、t, t, n. えー。あと、いつすごい。ST です。If city, then, A, ends with, A, into A. ここまでように、例えば、The Capital of Country。だら、Is the city of。これで。あ、oh. あ、こうやってない。いそうしよう。ごめんなさいよね。Welcome back. Here's how we can refactor our code. So instead of index f, we can use over here includes. And we can remove this weird comparison. インクルーズでもね。インクルーズでもね。This means basically that the, the variable starts with some string. And instead of this word comparison over here, we can just use ends with. And remove the comparison. Let's see so far. Yeah, we have the correct things. And now, in order to use template literals, we have to get rid of the、uh, post operator, surround this variable over here with curly braces, and prefix it with dollar sign. And we can also either move this over here to this line, or keep it on the other line and use the post operator. Surround it with. Back ticks again, and we have. Oops. All right, I have、um, one extra back tick over here, and yeah, we have now the correct answer. Great job, everyone.
In this task, we took a look at the new utility methods for strings, starts with, ends with, and includes. We also learned about template literals. I'll see you in task six, where we'll talk about my favorite ES6 feature, arrow functions. The final, really awesome feature that we're gonna learn is called arrow functions. This is my all time favorite ES6 feature. Arrow functions have three main advantages when compared to regular functions. First of all, they are less verbose. They also have implicit return, which again contributes to their consistency. And finally, this is picked up from their surroundings. Let's just clean up the previous task so that we don't have uh, extra console logs. Go to the sixth task and declare a numbers array. We're gonna have uh, just the first six whole numbers over here. And now uh, we want to declare the doubled numbers. え、ここまでやって。ロープ and an easy way to calculate them is by using the numbers map array. So we can use num map ダブルのところのディナミックスディナミックイコールナムイチマップえ、これ numbers.map and iterate through each through each uh, item of the array. We can, are gonna receive this item inside a function and then we can return the new value, which in this case is gonna be the doubled value. That's okay. Okay. Um, function. ファンクション。ファンクション。ファンクション。ファンクション。ファンクション。ファンクション。ファンクション。ファンクション。ファンクション。ファンクション。ファンクション。ファンクション。ファンクション。ファンクション。ファンクション。ファンクション。ファンク
And as you can see, we have the same result. We can simplify it even more. Because we have just a single parameter, we can omit the braces. As you can see, this is the same thing. Important note here that if we have a default value for the number or some, um, some more parameters, like two or more, we need to keep the braces. Awesome. Another way to simplify it is by using the implicit return that I mentioned. Because we have just a single expression here, and this is also the return value, we can omit the body of this function. So we have to remove uh, the... <laughs> Return number. Brackets, the semicolon, and also the return keywords. And we can just write. The series in Kakarina semicolon on Kiru. Also the top. Hmm? Oh, could it be the night? Ah. Just on a single line. As you can see, we have this very, very simple function over here, and it's very succinct and easy to understand. The code is much easier to read. I'll go in a little further and extract the arrow function to a variable. So I'm just going to move this code over here and declare a new variable, which is going to be called calculate double. Calculate double. Double equal. And then I can just provide. And それ自体をやって、僕は軽くダブル。Oh. As you can see, it is much much easier to read that way. Awesome. Let's practice our new knowledge. So in this exercise, I'm gonna use the filter function over this array over here, and I want to filter out only the prime numbers. So go ahead and pause the video and add the necessary function over here, and make sure to use arrow functions. Eto. Prime numbers filter. え、これ。フィルターアットファンクション。え、
えー、関数がわからん。要するに、間のあれだね、N の中、その前のナンバーズ。えー、割り切れたらダメなんだよね。N。えー、プライムコンメンかなエンディション。エンディパーセント。プライム。これどうだあれーだから N 多分プライム引きつけるのかなちょっとわからん。これは、ビデオ見てみよう。Welcome back. Here is how we can solve our challenge with an arrow function. I'm just gonna declare the is prime function over here. That is gonna take a single number. And we're gonna take the reminder of the division of two. And if this reminder is zero, then the number is prime. Now I'm just gonna use the is prime function that we have over here. And eh, so it is easy, no? ああ、そっか。素数じゃなくて、偶数かどうかだもんな。ゼロで、ここに、イズプライムとつけばいいだけか。あれあ、ここここ。うん。is prime n。こうか。こう。246. Pass it to, as an argument to the filter method. Let's save the code, and as, as you can see, we have only the prime numbers over here. Great job! We scratch the surface of the arrow function. Mm -hmm. ジップライムはアローファンクションですが、エンパスにはつけて。うん、そうだよね、ナンバーポール。タスク6は終わって。Hi everyone, welcome to the final task of our project today. Let's see how the arrow functions introduced by ES6 solve the most common these problems in JavaScript. Before arrow functions, 
every new function defined its own this value based on how the function was called. If the function is a constructor, the this value was the new object. If it's an object method, the this value would be the base object. And if it's just a regular function, then the this value would be undefined. Let's have a little example here. We're gonna create a function that is actually gonna be a uh, constructor function. That's why we are capitalizing it. And this dog is gonna have an age of zero. And then we're gonna set an interval. And in this interval, every time that one second elapses, we are actually gonna try to increase the age of the dog and then print the age. All right, let's initialize this dog, which is actually a puppy because it's um, zero ages old. And see what happens. But we get none or not a number. Uh. Unfortunately, the above won't work as expected because this function over here has its own this. And it basically doesn't inherit the this from its context. So here's how we can fix this very easily. We can swap the function for an arrow function. Let's save again. And now we have our h actually increasing. This is because the arrow function actually takes, uh, takes the this from its surroundings. So it has a lexical this instead of defining its all this. All right, let's stop this before our dog gets too old. And save the file again. And another thing that we need to know is that arrow functions also don't have their own arguments object. So let's consider the following. Uh, we had the is prime, now we're gonna add the is odd function. And again, this is gonna be an arrow function. And we're gonna try to receive arguments. As you know, the regular functions in JavaScript have the arguments object. Oh, sorry, not arguments here, but um, we can actually just access the arguments by using the arguments keyword. So we can check if uh, the reminder of the division of two is one, and this should give us the um, if the number is odd. And in this case, a number is the first argument of the function. Let's try calling that. We're gonna call it with one, which is a not number, and we're gonna get false. But what is arguments over here? Let's see quickly. Of course, we also need to return because I added a body for the function. Let's save it. And actually the arguments come again from the surrounding context of the arrow function. These are not the arguments of the function itself. So this is not very useful, right? Instead of using arguments, we can use the rest operator that we saw earlier. So we can have three dots over here and then arcs. We can't use arguments because it is a reserved keyword and we don't want to override it. And then we can just use arcs here and over here. And now we get the actual arguments that we used to call this function. Let's add some other things just uh, Case. Yeah, we see that these are actually the arguments of the function. It's time for our final challenge. All right, let's come over here and uncomment this thing over here. And what we have is an error that we get. And we have cannot read forward to go to the open default. Uh, fail final challenge. It's, it's Translator. Bulgaria no hita no ka. Eh, translator are function da kara. Uh, 
、えー、プランクション格好だ。かっこあるのに使えるってことエクスプレートかこうリターンディスプレイスえー、これだこれ、あの、エスプトルか。えー、イングリス。あか。欲しいよ。だって、そうじゃなきゃわかんないじゃん。リターンです。リスティクションです。マップファン、マップ。ここが、えっ、ー、と、待ってよ。まだ、まだなら。これがいいの決定。よし、あれー。グリッド、グッド。コンストランスレーター。ゲット。ジャパン。えーと、アンスペクトとか楽しんだ。百七十六。ああ。もうこれが邪魔だったのね。そうすると。リターンディスプレイス、ベンスプリット。エンバップ。エンジョイン。ディスフレーズしてリターンディスフレーズ
score. こういうふうに変えたい。そしたコンソールログ。まあ、とりあえず全部足しかせてみよう。アニメ誕生変動ね。コンスーツトランスレーター、ゲッチャパニーズクレーズ。ニュートランスレーター。トランスレーター、プロトタイプ、ゲット、ジャパニーズ。クレーズ、イコール。カッカッカッカッカッカッカッえい、それぞれを。えー、マップなるんだから、こうファンクなんて戻そう。かっこかっこな。OK。で、このコンソールがそうするものに関係なきゃいらないと。はい。はい。So your job is to find the problem and to fix it. So go ahead and pause the video and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. Here's how we can very easily fix our、uh, function. So we need to use a narrow function here because we, do, we will have access to the this object that way. Yeah, arrow function function we can just remove The curly braces and have an implicit return. Let's save this. And now we have the translation all right. Awesome. That was our final challenge. Well done. 
In this project, we reviewed how we can write modern JavaScript by using the features introduced with ts 6 the sixth version of the ECMAScript specification, which standardizes the JavaScript language. Along the way, we learned how to solve these problems with arrow functions, how to declare block scoped variables with left and const, and so much more. This knowledge will help you in your day-to-day -day development job and in your hobby JavaScript projects as well. You can now write safe and perform on JavaScript code, which is also a lot more succinct. Thank you for coming on this journey through the GS6 with me and letting to guide me to you. Have a great rest of your day and I hope I'll see you soon. これで9までやったから、こっちは OK。テストグレーティットクイズツイズユーブレスモンスのダウジュコができればおしまいと。What's the name of the specific and translated service language? What is HMS? It can be the keyword that can be used to the way block scope of the house. バーも一応入るのかなオールだったら。パッと、ウィルビーターでセッス、ウィズキットフロワーズ、ブロミッターズ。これかなパッと、イラブルのフォローインコードブロック、エクゼキュートなんですよ。4番。っこれはフリーズはエラー出るか。エラー出ない。いや、エラーで。What will be printed as the standard out of the following code block? Is this a... Ninja, Shinamon, de... Oh, Naruto. It's the following string method induction is this. Include and repeat. Start with. To begin and cross the results. Well, back to it. Which of the following words are function expressions? これと、ああ。これと。ねえ、メリピーツ。で、アロンさんもデアオンスピン。Been... あと、これ正解でしょ正解正解。バーは半分です、ね。チャンスです、ね。エラーはね。うん、もう一回。もう一度試すと。これはエクノスコイ。こ
で、コンストとレッドだけ。で、アンコーテーラー。で、ここでやっていけば、ネームデビル。で、デビルズに行く。と、ジンジャーズ。スタートウィッツ。リピート。エンドウィッツ。インクル。バックコート、ブックコートか。えー、っと、あー。ああ、最後まつまげとか。というわけで。一応クリアと。あとはやってきみたいに覚える、覚えるでしょう。まあ、終了としてマークと。というわけで、ここは、終わりました。ES リスフィックスの基本はまだ終わったので、今回はここまでにします。それでは、ありがとうございました。ではでは。ディスコンネクト